Can AI pick your next lottery number? You can't go a single day without hearing about how AI can do this and AI can do that. Mostly by instant self-proclaimed futurists who predict how AI will change your world. Just to be sure, with a verifiable doctoral degree in AI, I understand how the technology works, but I don't claim to know how to predict the long-term AI future. These off-the-chart predictions of how AI will influence our world are for most part useless, except to stir up our fears or imaginations. AI can be usefully applied in many industries, industries like education, insurance, manufacturing, healthcare, retail, oil and gas, banking and finance, technology, and pretty much anything else you can think of. So instead of trying to list all these applications, it's better to understand what type of problems can be solved by AI, because this helps us identify the problems in any industry that's a candidate for an AI-based solution. In this short video, I'll talk about a branch of AI called machine learning. This covers a big portion of what you hear is AI. There are three things needed for machine learning to work. First is data. If you want to understand which factors influence sales, you need to have collected data about it. Data like advertising channel that you use, the offers you make, the demographics you sell to, the region you're selling in, the weather, etc. You also have data about the increase in sales based on real executed campaigns. Next, you need to build a model that represents this data. These models are one of many machine learning algorithms, but the model itself can be tuned based on the input data. Even though two different problems, say marketing and supply chain optimization, could use the same model, the parameters of the model will be different. The data scientist spends a lot of time tuning these parameters. Finally, there is the action part. You've used the data to create the model, and now if you give it new data, it'll tell you something about the data, for which you'll have to take some action or the system takes some action. In the marketing campaign, you may decide to offer more coupons. And in the case of self-driving cars, it might adjust its driving direction to stick to the lanes. Now look at the domain that you work in and see if you have problems that can be solved by using these three things, data, model, and action. You need to know the domain well and have a reasonable amount of data to start out with. And you have to know what you want the model to tell you so you can take action. Sometimes you can get away with not having much data and this is for common problems that have already been solved by somebody else. Take face recognition, for example. Amazon has created a model that has already been trained to recognize objects and faces. You can simply take their model and use it for face recognition. These are called pre-trained models. On the other hand, if your data is unique, then chances are that nobody else has trained a machine learning model that's perfect for your problem. Okay, based on this simple notion, you might be able to see how you can apply AI to the following problems. Process optimization, language translation, product recommendations, giving travel directions, identifying drug interactions, and so on. I wanna mention that there is a lot more detail that goes into developing these systems, but at a high level, you can pretty much guess how AI systems would work. Back to the lottery example. Unless you're building an AI system for a Nigerian prince, it's a futile exercise. We have lots of historical data for the lottery, but the probability of each number occurring in the lottery is the same. There is no pattern in the data. If you build a machine learning system or the Nigerian prince sells you one, you are effectively looking for patterns where none exist. That's why domain knowledge is extremely important to understand the data before you feed it into a machine learning algorithm. The next time somebody says an AI system can do this spectacular thing, 
ask them how it works. If you see a lot of hand waving, then it's probably fluff or the explainer has no clue. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing. Thank you.